hi sweeties how are you doing welcome to naya sim and thank you all so much for all the love and support hope you all are doing great so today we'll be talking something very important and it's about a pump colored woman who actually came out to gaslight herself she started by why is it that i mean like you know everybody that everything that got to do with this will always have to do with race why does like you know reading and doing other things got to do with race like people cannot even enjoy themselves without people talking about race Mind you, she was trying to gaslight like black people and sexuality. I don't care about sexuality. And then people are telling her as a black person, I mean, like it's so hard for a black person to walk around the world. I mean, uh, a lot different than white people do. I mean, being a black person is, you all already know it is hard. You can't do things white black. You can't move around white black without anybody trying to profile you or trying to say one or two things or trying to like, you know, do some crazy things, you know? So young lady really went on a white woman really went on a very lengthy run and all of that. And after peering her right to the cis ideology, she decided to lock up her page because people really do come for her. People came for her and she locked up her page because she probably does not want to see what people are saying or does not want to read comments and all of that. But then some white women are saying that they read books without even knowing who the author or who the, or the gender of the writer and all that like. I am like, you are also part of the problems. Let's get into this. Moving forward. I'm convinced some of you motherfuckers cannot do anything, cannot enjoy anything, cannot breathe without thinking about race or, you know, the genders or anything else. I'm You're correct. There are people in this world who all they can think about is gender and race and sexuality. And you want to know why? Because they are part of the minority that this world tells them is wrong. A black person is going to walk around this world a lot differently than you or I because the world makes sure to point out to them that they are black and they are minority and they are bad. You and I, on the other hand, have the privilege of walking around as white women who aren't told on a daily basis that our mere existence is wrong. And that is why reading is political. Because... You and I can go to any bookstore in any aisle and pick up at least five books, even more, that represent us. But people of color, people who are part of the LGBTQ community, they don't have that privilege. They have to look. They have to try to find a way that they are represented because the world looks at them as wrong. So the least that you and I can do, the least that us white women can do is take a step back reevaluate our privilege and pick up a diverse book because here's the thing that creator that you stitched wasn't saying never read a book by a white author again never read a book by a straight author again what she was saying was pick a diverse book up every now and then and reading diversely isn't that hard all it entails is walking into a bookstore and taking more than five minutes to choose a book because yes, 75% of authors are white. So that means we have to look just maybe five more minutes more to find a diverse book that's well written, that is well represented. So it might take you just like a few minutes longer than how it usually takes you to pick a book, but it's not going to like ruin your whole day. And if you don't like that book, she's not saying you have to like every freaking diverse book you pick up. There are some diverse books that I've picked up that I have not enjoyed. And it's not because of the representation. It's just because I did not enjoy the story. But that does not mean that I'm never going to read a diverse book again. Taking five extra minutes out of your trip to Barnes & Noble or to wherever you get your books or even while you're scrolling on Amazon is not that hard. She's not asking that much. The BIPOC and LGBTQ community on Book Talk is not asking that much of you. And for you to act like this is the hardest thing in the world for you, come on, really? I'm sorry you've gone through your hardships. I have too. I have dealt with some really shitty stuff in my life. But that is not what privilege 
they're talking about. They are talking about the privilege that you and I have to not be discriminated against because of how we look and who we love. And for you to claim that you are having a hard time so you just don't want to read diversely, that's not how this works. That's the, <laughs> that makes no sense. The two things do not equal each other. If your response to a BIPOC creator or an LGBTQ creator is to come on here and complain about them asking you to just pick up a diverse book every now and then, you're the problem. Hard stop, you're the problem. of you motherfuckers cannot do anything cannot enjoy anything cannot breathe without thinking about race or you know the genders or anything else i'm convinced y'all can't do that her the whole thing you know all of this is intentional to do my only intention when i'm reading is to enjoy what the fuck i'm reading that's my only intention whatever that looks like whatever i enjoy reading dog romance not romance um you know horror books whatever it is okay that's my only intention i am not going to go and look for black gay, transgender, whatever. If they write a good book, a story that I'm interested in, that I can connect with on whatever level, I'll fucking read it. But my only intention is to enjoy it. Now, the first group of people that I ever found when I got onto TikTok was Book Talk. And as somebody who really enjoys reading, enjoys reading a lot of fantasy books and things like that, I was really drawn to it at first. But what quickly turned me away was women like this woman. I think that it is one very interesting how quickly women like this will talk about this force like people are forcing me to diversify my reading forcing me to do these things and to that i ask who fucking called <laughs> who called because i guarantee you no one has ever said this to that woman not once in their life and part of also what turned me off of book talk was that i was really coming to a place in my life where so much of the books i had been reading were authors main characters like it kind of stumped me because constantly that is just the you know the the standard quote unquote like the expectation when you're reading all these books is that likely it's going to be a main character and that was something that was frustrating for me it's like i get it i and, and it's funny too because so often this is something that say is that oh i can't relate to the character i can't da 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 da, da. and i'm like you're relating to an assassin girl who's like getting her back blown like every other chapter i don't think so <laughs> like <laughs> like i'm sorry you're not telling me that you're reading the throne of glass and relating to aelin <laughs> like y'all it's not realistic it's not giving what y'all think it's giving it's giving racism though it's giving that you hate seeing marginalized groups in books like and let's also get down to it reading is political like inherently reading is political what you choose to read what becomes popular it's political why do we think sarah j mass is so fucking popular because she is a woman who is writing for women like that is just it i think so many of you really think that like like what actually no this brings me to another question what do you think black people or latino people or asian people are doing when they're reading these popular book series do you think they're sitting there just going like man there's absolutely nothing interesting or cool about this book because this character doesn't look like me like if that was the case like the vast majority of popular ya novels would not be read by any people of color. And it's just so frustrating because it completely ignores the fact that there is a need for more diversity in books. Like, she's talking about how the U.S. is majority. And I'm like, do we think that books are only written in the U.S.? <laughs> like, do we think the U.S. is the only place that people read fantasy novels or people read these dark romances? Like, the world isn't majority, so why is a majority of books catered to people? 
that's political and that's a conversation that you all aren't ready to have and again this is part of why so many people of color are turned off from book talk in general like it is not an inclusive space it is not a space that is meant to cater to people who like diversity in their books and again who called for you? Nobody sent for you. So why are you saying this? I just had to say this because it is incredibly frustrating. And I want young black girls and young girls of the global majority who see things like this to know that there are changes coming to the book industry, that people are trying so hard to get better representation in the book industry and do not listen to women like this woman who is just very obviously a bigot you deserve to be seen in the books that you read you deserve to see characters that look like you or have similar lived experiences or even if it's just a fantasy book just fucking look like you because it why not why is that so wrong it's fantasy like it's it's not real people i really hope one day we can truly like just allow people to enjoy reading without random people like this woman just making these statements because they want to be a bigot. No, nobody said this. Nobody is forcing her to do this. And it's quite shameful that she would take it upon herself to do this. Reading should be something that everybody gets to enjoy. Reading should be something where everybody gets to see themselves represented. And it's sad that that's so often not the case. I'm convinced some of you motherfuckers cannot do anything, cannot enjoy anything, cannot breathe without thinking about race or, you know, the gender. This is not my usual content, but I am on BookTok, so I did have the displeasure of seeing this. If you are in a place of privilege to be able to say, why is everything always about race, sexual orientation, gender, etc.? That's why. Some of us have the privilege where it's possible for us to live blissfully unaware of why everything has to be about these things. Some people don't get to ask that question. Why is everything about X, Y, Z? It's astounding that there are people in this world that would absolutely disown their white daughter for dating a black man. But then when people are saying that you should read books by black authors, they say, why is everything about race? There are people that'll never speak to their loved ones again after they come out as trans. But then when a trans celebrity wins an award, they say, why is everything always about gender? There are people that are so passionate and believing that members of the LGBTQ plus community shouldn't be married. But then they say, why is everything about sexual orientation? Why does everything have to be about these things? Because you made it that way. You don't get to tell me that I need to stress myself out, making sure that I read enough books written by a black author, a gay author. This is your daily reminder that when you are accustomed to privilege and representation, equality, the ask for equality feels like oppression. Also note the wording that the original video used, stressed. It stresses her to have the burden of pursuing diversity in her books and her authors. And that is a fundamental concept among people who don't want to do the work. You don't get to tell me that I need to stress myself out, making sure that I read enough books written by a black author, a gay author. First and foremost, go back and watch that video. Um, not the one screaming lady, but the one that stitched it. I've always been an avid reader. I've read everything I can get my hands on. I love to immerse myself into to the worlds and stuff like that. And I never really paid attention to who was writing them. I really never cared um, as long as I can enjoy the book. But I was on Twitter. I was on Twitter doing the author Twitter stuff, if you all remember that, if you're authors, uh, where you would uh, pitch to agents and to publishers and, you know, then have little things or whatever. They'd have mentors and stuff before the drama got really too bad and I left Twitter. I saw a writer on there pitch her book, and she asked a question to an agent, you know, can a book be too black? And the agent said, no, let me see your book. Well, she ended up getting an, uh, that agent, actually, she ended up getting a deal, and she got published and got a movie, and that was Angie Thomas. Um, she wrote The Hate You Give. So, you know, her premise was very interesting, so I wanted to read it. So I actually got a chance to read it, a beta of it, be a beta reader. And it was really good. It made me ball my eyes out. But it made me realize that I don't really, even though I can say I understand, I don't really understand. The seeing of someone else's point of view is very eye-opening. Leads to more empathetic people when you see someone else's point of view. So even though I still like to read whatever I get my hands on, especially when I'm in like, like a read mode, I make it a point to diversify my reading to people with different points of views. Um, 
different lifestyles, different races, different sexual orientations, different religions. Um, it leads to a more empathetic people. It's not about taking away who you like. It's about <laughs> trying to understand other people. I mean, what's wrong with that? So this is all I got from the stitches. And uh, the truth is that she, it looks like, or it sounds Sister Holy. That is, her name is Holy. So I am adding Sister Holy to it, you know. It sounds like she needs to go and read White Fragility, you know. Don't worry, Sister Holy. And uh, it's a white offer. So just go and read it. And going through the video and seeing what people are commenting, a lot of people, white women are saying that uh, that they read book without knowing the author, you know. You are part of the problem. Because for you to say something like that, you are also part of the problem. The reality is that these people really do not understand that uh, America is built on race, right? And, and I mean, it will never stop. And the fact that they do not recognize black peoples and other people of color's predicaments is something that uh, that is really mind, uh, like it's kind of disturbing, you know? Some of them, they all know how their privilege, how they are easily, like, you know, you can go around, look for a white book, get it, move around. It's hard read to, like, find something from black. It is okay to be diverse, like, not just being stuck in one place and all that, right? And uh, for her to come out to also defend herself and, like, aggress, because that is very aggressive. I mean, she came out really, really very, very aggressive, trying to defend herself and what she stands for and the rest of it made it even worse because I really just do not understand them. The reality is that they, they tend to forget that they are, they have so much upper hands, like, you know, you all already know that as a palm colored person, it is very easy for them to like, you know, grab something that is for them. Just like as a black person, when you go to the store to buy your hair key or look for something you have to put on your face, like, you know, cream, like, you know, body lotion or maybe trying to buy makeup for yourself. It takes really a lot of time. It is not something like, you know, we find so easily like where I am right now. I do not buy cream because you don't even know what the cream is made of and all that. And you, I mean, you are very, very careful with whatever you are going to, whether eat or drink or put on your skin and all that. But they have the privilege of walking into a particular place and straight up easily getting what they want. So she is saying that she is stressed, probably thinking, I don't know how, like, you know, the whole thing is just really crazy. I tried to get into her account, right, to know why she is all stressed up over getting to know, uh, over reading books from different authors and all of that, or trying to call people out saying that everything about you, all, everything about you is all about race and all what not. So I went to really check the person that is out there. I mean, Pewing this uh, racist rhetoric and all that, only for me to find out that, uh, I mean, as strong as she came out to be, she also is not strong to face her, her, her racist ideology and all that. So she put on her up her this thing on private because she does not want to be roasted. Anyway, already people are roast, already roasting her on time, like on stitches and all that. But she locked up her page because she does not want to get a lot of a lot of uh, backlash. I mean, she probably does not want to see it and all that. Uh, if she feels really attacked and all that, she should probably I mean, look inside to see why she is being attacked and. Uh, Man, the whole thing is just really a mess. But like, you know, as I am saying, 90% of the authors that I read, I have no idea what the color of the skin 
of their sexuality. This is what one of them are saying. Some of them are saying most of the books they read, they do not know who the author and who wrote and all of that. How do you read a book you don't know who wrote it? You all are part of the problem. If you are part of the people putting up this kind of comments or saying things like this. So I really hope she posts more videos because after posting this, she went on uh, on private. She doesn't want anybody to talk to her. She doesn't want to see what people are saying about her. But let me tell you something. Palm colored people, they are racist. You see it all over. And when you see it, don't think that they, they are trying. No, that is who they are. And nothing is going to change about it. That's all I got to say. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.